the problem. This is, this is where the trust path and the sin is. It's not a love problem. Yeah. It's not even a physical problem. It becomes a, it's a physical problem when you come to children. Yes. It's a physical problem when you come to procreation. But long before it becomes even a physical problem, it's a spiritual problem. It's a spiritual problem. You cannot merge it spiritually and it can't. And because it can't be merged spiritually, it cannot do what it's supposed to do what? Physically. Then you can't procreate. But long before you can procreate, the life that God put into the form, into the asa, amen, will not be able to operate properly. So therefore, Bara can never flow through asa properly. Amen. So it, it's a natural design against our natural makeup. And one thing for certain, it's definitely not a love problem. In no shape or form, is it a, a man can't love a, a, a man or a woman can't love a woman. That is never part of the problem. In fact, that is commanded. You have to. Men have to love men, and women have to love women, and vice versa. And then, even, but as I said, it, it's a, it's a union problem, spiritually and physically. And actually more spiritually, physically only because of what the union is supposed to do. God said, why did I allow merging? God said, why, in Malachi, you go, why did I allow that which I separate from the beginning, make male and female, why did I allow it to come back again? He said, because I desire what? Godly offspring. I desire the plug and the receptacle to come together where it can do something. Now we can substitute and adapt and so forth. But it still doesn't change why it was why you were supposed to come together. If that you should love each other, they shouldn't come together. You can love each other without trying to amen, go against the natural design. But if you're going to come together, then you come together for this purpose. God said, I have a reason why I'm doing the merger, that, I, that which I separate from the beginning. In the name of Jesus. So Sifu, when you took it, I always interpret that. So the other translations is, that they took it from a space in the rib. Mm -hmm. So, of course, because it has to be a bear. It can't be, it can't, it can't be, um, I mean, it has to be from the invisible. You know what I'm saying? But you had already, remember, Genesis 1, 27, you already have it there. So he's just going to separate it now. What was together, he's just going to separate it. Right. And then the same way how he, how he built up Adam back, after he took away the space, fill in the space, yeah. the same in a way what he separated, he just built up. He it. created or bare a male and female. Correct. And then he just separated it. Yes. So what he really did, um, the second one, when he separated, is, is he did Asa now, because it's already there. Correct. Right. So he created the male and female, but he made male and female then. Correct. Amen. Right. So he says the body is changing. Right. Amen. Then he brings her. Right. Amen. Right. So then immediately the man, the man, Adam was never confused. You could see this way. He was so he's so much like God before sin. He's not confused this. Well, God, even if he was asleep when he wake up, it's clear because he's, 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 he's made like God. His, his, his knowledge is almost infinite. Right. He can immediately understand it. Or immediately can or immediately can tell like Jesus. There were over five thousand people touching Jesus. But when the lady that was bleeding for 12 years touched Jesus, he got power, just what? Leave me. Adam can immediately tell, I've been separated. Right. He's not confused in any way, shape. I don't know if you ever wake up from a surgery, you don't even know really what's going on. He's not having that problem. Yeah. He's quite clear right away that can go, okay. And as soon as God bring her to him, amen. Then Adam said right away, this creature, this, this, this person you're bringing in front of me is now bone of my bone. She come from me. Amen? And flesh of my flesh. Right. And I will call her, amen, woman. Because he go, this, this is my female side. Amen? Or female man. Can God create spirit man? Amen? Because she was taken out of me. Very, very out of me. Amen? The Bible didn't show God go and like, like uh, breathe into Eve and create another spirit. He just separate. Amen? In the name of Jesus. He went on to say verse 23. Actually, I finished 23, 24. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall become united. Mm -hmm. Notice, return. That word united means return to that which what? Was taken from him. 
This is the old idea, you know, the, the so-called mythical idea like this. I have a soulmate. In essence, I'm looking for the part that is separated what? From, from me. Yeah. And what supposed to be, this is this is they used to believe this in ancient times. The part that separates, there are many people, but there's an exact part that when I find it, I will know this is my flag. It will fit. There's many people can kind of fit, but when I find the right one, it will fit. Yes, it, it, it's it's traced back to the ancient Greeks. Yes. They they believed there was a soulmate. Yes. Yeah. Like they knew they knew there was separation. Yeah, there's all like like the diff, different kinds of love. Yes. Yeah. And they go, when I find my side flag, it will naturally fit. lock it. Yeah. Until then, I'm lost. I am uh, yes. You know, it is one of the reasons, even in the world, what do we call your mate, your, your, your married, your wife or husband? My soulmate or what? My better what? Half. In, this, is the, this is the half that works best with me. This is why we call our wife or our husband, my better half, I'm waiting for my better half, etc. It is, it, it is the other component that works exactly with you. Is that biblical though, soulmate? Um, there's no um, period that you don't see it in the Bible. Um, I don't, I don't see yeah, it. I cannot remember I'm reading it that way. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But but the whole idea, as I said, that which was separated has been this, this is what I said. You will leave your mother and father house, right. amen, to find your wife that can be renew, reunited to you. I'll say it different. Find the side flag that was separated from you. You know me and my wife was talking this morning. One little thing, you ask anybody that has laser like focus. Um Marriage is a wonderful, wonderful process. And it can happen even in the military or in war, you know, um, you might have a team that blazing ahead. But you always have a team bringing up the rear to cover your what? Your, your side flank behind the part that certain person don't get behind you. You, you understand? Sometimes when you're busy or you're building, whether it's a company or doing something, you'll find the sides are very getting overlooked or exposed because there's nobody looking the peripheral and and covering that area. Amen. So all the things that you're not dealing with because you're so focused on trying to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish, amen, your side flank is the one that accommodates for all that area and all that space and the people and think, Mr. Elias, welcome princess, amen. They cover that area there in the name of Jesus. Amen. So it's a very, very important component and when it's operating properly. It's just like in football. Perfect. Perfect, exact same thing. Yeah, you don't have that. The quarterback gets stopped. Yes. You can't run down the field. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. So it's a crucial point because you simply can focus on the target and try to deal with, navigate with all of that at the same well, time. Well, we know this. Like the leader, he's so focused on moving ahead, but the woman is just covering. In other words, the sides and the back, she's got. Yes. Because he has to focus everything to drill. Yes, because it's not simple to pierce. Perfect. You know, so, so you, you need both to happen. Simultaneously. So that's very scripture say, amen. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall be shall become united, amen, cleave to his wife, and they shall become one. Amen. Verse 25 says, And the man and his wife were both naked and were not embarrassed or ashamed in each other's presence, because they are one. Right. They come from the same place. They don't feel odd or or, or, or rare or weird, you know, that uh, they're operating in a place that they should not be operating. Amen? In the name of Jesus. So we can see and, and see the importance of it. There are two sides. There's the purpose side and the created side. On, on, on the spiritual side, welcome, we see God created man in his image and likeness, a man that can do what's pleasing and capable, and a man that can relate into him. Amen? We can see in the helping side, God separate from man someone that can relate back to him and can help him, amen, and operate effectively. And also, please be clear with this component. Notice in Adam's separation, is one side is not higher than the what? The other. Man is not superior to woman or woman superior to man. They both have a body. They both have a spirit. Just create for different reasons. One male, one female. Different role. Just different role. But the same God, amen, that create man and relates to man's spirit is the same God create woman and relates to what? Woman's spirit. Amen? The same God fellowships and communicates with both of them and allows them to communicate with each other. 
Amen. So, you know, a long time the female has been dominated, you know, in, 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 especially in ancient time by the male. You know, um, uh, such things, that's the way God created. She equally can do, amen, everything he can do just about and vice versa. In, in the name of Jesus. But in the marriage, it's just... Yeah, in, in the marriage, you know, man have a part that, amen, that he leads, he go forward, amen, in direction. But the women, the person covering the flag in, in a way is the one that's covering the most ground. Because she's going this way. Right. Amen. She, she safeguards in this way. Wife E is more directionally. This is why in the garden, when God came, who did he call first? Adam. Adam. Because he is responsible for what? Sure. Direction. When he come, even on Eve, why do you say Eve didn't? Because the flank looks for the where the, the flank is like is car. A man in a marriage is designed like a car that is front wheel drive. Where the front wheel is going, the flank naturally what? Comes. So God don't go and call the flank and go, hey, why did you do this? He go, why did you amen, allow this to happen? You're the direction. It'll be like if 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 um Elias is do something, you know, you don't call Elias. You call his parents. He follows. This is what I notice. Amen? In the name of Jesus. So the Lord, as we see, who create, amen, man, male, and female, then separate. Amen? They're supposed to have code in it. Correct. In truth, they're one. Yes, they are. Yeah. This is why I said they become one. That's the mystery. They the come from the same, the mystery of the marriage is they come from the same being. Separated, return, reunited to the same being, and the purpose is to do the same one thing, both to have dominion, amen, over the air, over the water, and on the earth. Yeah. Both are held accountable. Yeah. Both to operate as one. Perfect. Both are to receive God's love. Now, both men and women are designed to constantly be in the presence of God. They're designed to constantly receive love from God and to reciprocate love to God and to what? Each other. As I said, we are like satellite dishes. We are like satellite dishes. We are constantly designed to receive love from God and then only then we can send love to what? Each other. We don't generate. We are designed and wired, amen, to receive love from God then we are able to reciprocate it to God and transmit it to each other. Anytime we are now in the position, as I say, we're just like a parabolic mirror or satellite, if we're in a position where we cannot receive love, amen, from God, you won't be able to reciprocate it to love to God and you won't be able to transmit it to other people. Correct. Amen? In the name of Jesus. Yeah. But just like how for, you might have uh, this TV, if the TV cannot plug into the wall, though it has potential to show movies and do different things, it won't work. Yeah, I, I heard this once and I thought it was wise. There's two sources of light. Mm -hmm. There's the, the light, like a candle, or the sun, and then there's a mirror. Mm -hmm. We're the mirror. Mm -hmm. If we try to be the source ourselves, yes. like we're the, the little fire brand, Perfect. we quickly burn out. And, Perfect. Yeah. I agree. Amen. So, as I said, in the ways of God, love, we already established last week, God is love, but we need to understand, how does it work? Well, God created a man in his image that he can love, or God created an object in his image. He did separate it, amen, to accomplish the work, amen, by his, by his design and choice, but he created it to receive love, to abide in love, to stay in the love. It works best. Amen. With God in the marriage and with each other when we are in what? Love. love. When I am communing properly with God is when I love my wife and other people what? Best. When I am not interplaying, that's simply because the way I am created. When my wife is fellowshipping with God properly, she's reading her Bible and she's praying and she's spending time with it, is when she loves me and others what? Best. Is when I can love my children and my brothers and sisters and humanity best. You know why many of us, we can't give up ourselves when it's for, you know, I, I love this. You know, because um, 
and society a lot of time build in this way, you know, um, let, let, let's say in this perspective, well, a woman should listen to the man, etc., and or be submissive to the man, um, you know, in, in part, but they, they omit this component. Christ said this, husband, give yourself up for your wife, the same way how Christ what? Give himself up for the church. So let me put your interests and the things you want aside so you can attend to the things your wife needs or want. This is the first part of marriage. Husband, give yourself up for your wife. I know you have a lot of desires and like and things you want to do, but you must put them aside so your wife, the things she needs and wants can be accommodated. Then the scripture said, and wife submit to your husband. Amen? So the wife submits because the husband what? He first submit. In essence, you have a simple mystery. If you want your wife to submit, what do you have to do first? Submit. Submit first. You see, this is what many people don't understand. Because she comes from my flange, my side, and because, amen, where I go, she naturally comes, because she naturally is built in that way. If I am trying to force my way upon her, bully her, what does this activate in the back? The exact same thing, it reciprocates it. If I try to bully her, the side flash reacts the exact same way. If I give myself up for her, she naturally what? Gives herself up, she naturally submits. Mm -hmm. In that sense, I'll this way. If she see, I'm giving up myself to take care of all, all of her needs. She don't fight to defend. She naturally submits because she knows I have her best interest what? At heart. If she see I will not give up myself for her best interest, then she starts to behave like, amen, like the head instead of the flange. And instead of she stay at the garden here, she starts to come here. Now neither one of us are of what? A flange. We're exposed. There's no covering in the back. Imagine if the soldier here that's covering up the back and know that you're supposed to cover the front. But if they feel you're giving up the front, do you think they stay in the back so they can get attacked? No, they'll come to the front. And now you have a problem. Yeah. Amen. So the husband, according to the kingdom principle, God is the one who institutes marriage. He must give himself up for his wife. And in return, she must submit. Because she knows he has her best interests at heart. In every way, shape, or form. Hallelujah. This was the principle of getting married. In essence, God goes, if you will not give up yourself, for your wife, you shouldn't be married. Amen? If you will not become responsible for all the things in regards to your wife, then you should not be reun reunited. If the egg is not fully responsible for the flange, it shouldn't. And if the flange will not submit, it makes the head, make it extremely difficult for the head to what? Go in any direction. If the covering is not there, it is very hard, amen, to, to navigate any direction effectively. Right. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. It is absolutely a necessity. And for him to submit to her, he has to submit to God. Of course. As I said, and if both of them cannot submit to God, none of this is going to happen. Well, period. They're not going to sacrifice and submit. No. Because, you see, they don't have the power. we're going to talk in the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about a different kind of love. When you submit to God, God will bring you into the love, His divine love, which is known as agape, or sacrificial love. How to give up yourself for God and for your wife and for the wife to give up. Amen? The wife must feel, I don't want to make your life any harder, so I'll submit. And, and, amen? And the wife must ex also experience, amen? I know you have my best interest no matter what. Right. And the husband must move, vice versa. You have me cover at all times. You know one of the things I, I, I say this to my wife all the time. I love my wife a lot. And ask her, she's testimony, she's here. I always tell her, this, thank you for not making my life more challenging than it's needed. To. The path is hard enough. Yes. But she does not sabotage. She watched the, the flange and she does not make me as I try to pierce um, my life distracted. Good job, mama. And this only happens because we both fellowship with the Lord. Yes. I cannot stay focused if she's constantly not covering the flange 
or distracting me from your focus. Yes, if you look to the Lord, He'll show you your role. Amen. And she will, will not do our part if she feels I don't have her best interests covered. Of course. Amen. In the name of Jesus. To God be that glory. We're going to look at one more scripture today and then we're going to stop here for today. And next week, I believe, we, we're going to talk about the things that look like this, but it's not actually this. Amen. Next week, I want to talk about the different kind of love that look like sacrificial love, but they're not divine love. But I want, to I want to finish up today on we are created in the image of God, or as I said, to be, to be able to relate to God. Amen. And, and, and the purpose of marriage or returning the site flange, the reunited, is for relatability so they can work effectively in Jesus' name. Let's look at um, the last scripture for today. John 15, verse 6 to 9. Remember, we are both designed and hardwired to communicate with God and to receive and to play with God. Amen. And, and um, in the marriage relationship. Love allows us to give up ourselves for each other. In the name of Jesus. John chapter 15, 6 through 9. <coughs> God is good. Say amen when you do. Verse 6 read, if a person, amen, does not dwell in me, amen, he is thrown out like a broken off branch and withered. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire and they are born. He said, if you don't stay in me, you will, amen, just wither up and you're just thrown away because there will be nothing in you. It went on to say, verse 7, If you live in me, abide, vitally united to me, very much the way a marriage work, and my words remain in you and continue to live in your heart. Ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. When you bear, produce much fruit, my Father is honored and glorified, and you show and prove yourself to be true followers of mine. So once you're abiding, you should start to produce. If not, you are producing, but the natural life and light in you, in him, in the source that you are plugging in, will come forth. Once the TV stay plugged into the wall and into the internet, it has power and it has the channel coming through. But once the TV is disconnect, amen, it's useless. It can't do it on its own. One, it has no power, and two, it has no internet to produce what? anything. We are like that. Because we are created in the image of God and created to, in Eden to stay within His presence. Amen. The same way the side flange. If the side flange ever become the head, now you have become upside down. It is operating in a place. It's not designed to what? Operate. And vice versa. If the head become the side flange, also it's upside down. Hallelujah. Then immediately also it would work because it's not designed to be there. Amen? You know, I believe it's one of the reasons God punished Adam. When God come and call Adam and go on, he might have punished him. The severity of it was, I believe, he asked him, why did you allow these things to happen? This is Adam responding. It was my side flank that you brought to me. She make it happen. Correct. He didn't even have the the man like this to go like, I should have stopped it because she came from me. I'm the one you give it. And, but I just let it happen to him. I think God would respect that more. But he's trying to blame the rear wheel why the front wheel didn't choose direction. Yeah, he's acting like a side flank. And then she did exactly what she was supposed to do. Yeah, she got, well, the devil lead me. It's supposed to be him. But he led me and I followed. In essence, God asks you, why did you let someone else lead your side? Right. 
This is the question God asks you. Why did you allow someone else to leave your side? The first problem, why was his side away from him? This is the first problem there. Why is the side flank not where he was? This is the first problem. And then second, this is why in many culture, you're not allowed to talk to someone side flank unless they're what? There. If a man wife is by herself, you can't talk to her. Not even by mistake. You can't strike up an agreement. Can't do you can't do anything. You know, you, you have to communicate to them first. So God goes, why is somebody else leading your sight flag? That's the first. Why is she away from you? Why is someone else leading her? Amen. And instead of going, Lord, I don't know, I was busy watching her ever, he goes, well, like, well, like, it's almost like you go to God, but if you didn't separate it from me, you know, and if you didn't bring her back this way, it was not about me. He blamed the devil. Yeah. Adam blamed Eve. Yeah. Adam, Adam blamed God. Everyone yeah. Did. And God just dealt with him because I think he immediately it showed man being in risk responsible. That which is designed for responsibility to operate like God and deal with things like God, trying to get out of it. A man is doing it ever since. He's always trying to sidestep what he or she is supposed to be doing. Amen. Just like Eve is Adam, side flank, we are Christ. Amen? We abide in Him. Amen? Apart from Him, we can do nothing. It's easy for us to be led by other people, things, and force away from Christ. This is why right, Philippians 2.9, it says lay hold of the head. Head choose direction. The Bible says Christ is your direction. He leads, we are referred to as what? The bride, the side flank. The church is Christ's bride, his side flank. If Christ is not leading us, we, have, we become very susceptible, just like Eve, for the devil to what? Lead us. Because a bride or a side flank is always looking for what? The head, direction. It naturally looks for direction. It, it has to. Just the simple way how it was designed. But if you do not, amen, give the side direction, wait till for, uh, somebody else will. Somebody else will. You know, my, my wife is very clear on, on pretty much everything we do and what we are planning. If my wife comes to me, she's talking things that is not um, consistent with the plans we've been making and the goals we have. I'll have one question for her right now. And I'm going to ask you as a church. Who have you been talking to? Where have you been that these ideas and concepts have suddenly appeared? Where did you get them from? Vice versa. My wife and me fellowship a lot, and my wife is, you know, very good to with God and where he's going. Now, if she will know the kingdom of God and God of his way, I come and I am talking something of the world. Baby, let's start open clubs and let's start. She'll go, who have you been listening to? When did you get this direction? What does this direction have to do with our kingdom? We were created for this reason. How did it get over here? I have to follow you, but I, I have a serious problem following you with the direction you're going now. That is not consistent with our kingdom. Amen? <coughs> the head of the marriage has to be listening to God. It's why God said, make sure your spirit is controlled by my spirit. This is your responsibility. He said, I'll give you grace, but you have to. The side flank must make sure she lay hold of the head. And the head must make sure the side flank never come out of the side. My wife should always want to know where, amen, what's controlling my spirit. And I always want to know where she's getting data from. All the time. Not sometimes, all the time. Amen? You know, this is, this, this, me and my wife talk about this. I have one vulnerable point if I'm careless, and that is my wife. She's the closest to where she's positioned and can let someone straight it or block them. So I all and vice versa. Because I'm, I'm leading in this direction, she should be always concerned what's controlling my spirit. Amen? Where are we? Here we stop first.
Uh, we, we did just six. We did six and seven, I think. Seven. We did seven. Yeah. Seven. No, we, yes, we did. Yeah. Verse eight. Yeah, we're in. When you bear fruit, much fruit, my Father is honored and glorify Him. And you show and prove yourself to be true followers of mine. Now look at verse 9 very carefully. I have loved you. Again, created by love, planned for by love, placed in love. Amen? I have loved you just as my Father has loved me. Abide in what? My love. Continue in His love with me. So God is love and Christ said, I abide in my Father love. And you must continue in our Father love with me. Anytime you come out of Christ, you come out of what? The love of God, which is where you're designed to stay, operate, where anything can be done. Christ said, I have loved you and my Father has loved me. Amen? Now stay continuously in my love. Amen? In my Father love as I stay. We are designed as objects of God love. You know, our focus this year is humanity, the object of God love. God loves humanity that even when they're sinning and rebelling against it and, and mixing up things, etc. Yet he pursued them, choosing them by love, planning for them by love, and placed them in love. Amen? Even Jesus never separates from God love. So God gives us the very life and spirit, the very life and love that always go back to God. It always returns to God. When you see we are strained, is one reason. You're not in, especially a regenerated or a Christian, you are simply not in your spirit. Your spirit always re wants to return to God. It is your soul and the idea and the feelings and the body that drift away. But the spirit naturally what? Always returns to God. Amen? In Jesus' name. We're going to stop there for um, today. But next week we're going to talk about, uh, let's preface it, one of the things, the limitation of the English word, we use that word, we see, read the word love in the Bible, but we have one word, just love, for all different kind of love. In, in, in the Greek language, it wasn't so. They have different kind of words for different kind of love because they, they know their different kind of love can be expressed. But we treat it all as one general broad stroke that it's just love. We're going you know, to talk about filios love, what that kind of love is like. You know, um, the Greek have four words for love. We're going to talk about philios. We're going to talk about storage. We're going to talk about heroes love. And then we're going to talk about agape, um, self-sacrificial love. Because we need to understand what kind of love um, God is taught, God is, and what kind of love when God said there's no greater love than he can give up himself for his brother. What kind of love? And to make sure we understand where we are in the flow of love. Now all the other love. They do come from divine love, because God is the source. If, if God wasn't love and we weren't created in, him, in His image, we, we would know none of the other kind of love. We will not know Philios, we will not know Storge, Eros, or none at all. But I don't care which one of the love you're operating in, but it must flow out of agape, out of sacrificial love. Any form of love or expression of love that is not flowing from agape, one will not be sustained, it will malfunction, and it will not operate in an effective way in the name of Jesus. So next week we'll pick up right off the back with Philios and uh, what they're like, so you can learn to discern the different aspect of it and the way of it in the name of Jesus. We're going to um, take up now tithing and then um, do communion in the name of Jesus. And as usual, anyone watching us on the net, we thank God for your life. And we trust in the Lord. I'm trusting that the Lord who's looking, as I say, if you get a chance, look up the scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. God had made his appeal to Jesus, and now he's making it. This is why I'm making it today. He makes it through the church. Love compels us, it urges us and controls us. And God's saying right now, he has forgiven you of your sin, and he wants to lay hold of the forgiveness. This is the whole process of accepting Jesus. They're too faltering. In order for your sins to be forgiven, amen, because of the things we have done, not operating to how we were designed according to Genesis chapter 1, verse um, 26 and 27, and what we were created to do. When we violate the created position of how we were created, this trespass, at that point the owner or the creator has to decide to destroy the things, amen, punish the things, or, or eliminate the thing, etc. So what God has decided, though his, his, his creation is malfunctioning, 
is going to pay for all the malfunction it has done to itself, to him, number one, and to others and to the planet. And he's going to give it a new life. This is the process of accepting Jesus. So the wrongs you've done can be forgiven. God shall cancel all the trespassing, all the ways you have gone against the design, the original, original design. And I'll give you a new life so you can stop malfunctioning. One that operates and abide with me and operate to your highest level. So anyone who's operating in that life, just abide in God's love. Just ask the Lord, help me to stay, amen, in your love as Jesus stay in your love. So I can produce much fruit. And anyone who's not returned yet to the favor where God would want to bless him and keep him and watch over him, amen. And God just want to plan all the things he want to do for him. I want to invite you right now, wherever you are, if you confess and repeat after me that Jesus is the Son of God, amen. Fully authorized to do this through the Father. And God raised him from the dead. And he's the Lord and the Christ. The owner and the savior of humanity. Then you shall be saved and saved to the uttermost. And God shall forgive your sins. Amen. And you shall receive the very life and the Holy Spirit that Jesus had. And the blessing that God so wants to confer. And you shall be placed into his love. Where your spirit shall and your soul and your body. And your life can operate at a high optimal level in the name of Jesus. So we thank God for your life. And we just looking forward to hear the testimony of all God doing in your life. In Jesus' name.